Are you having problems with your upper register? Does your trumpet feel stuffy? Do you feel like you can't get enough air through? Maybe you're having problems with your articulation. In this video, we're gonna tell you about something that solves all these issues and more. So stay tuned. Good today. Oh, thanks. I got <laughs> one of these shirts. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I'll have to get one myself. I'm still in this old ratty t-shirt. Yeah. So today we are going to talk about solving one of the biggest problems in equipment as far as trumpets and any, pretty much any valve instrument. Players don't want better upper register. They want a better response. They want better projection, endurance. Uh, they're so common. And the thing is, players always try to solve it with this little thing, with three and a half inches of brass. And what they fail to consider is the four feet of brass in front of them. And what we know here at the shop is the four feet of brass is always gonna win. It's always gonna beat out what you can do with the mouthpiece. One of the main, main culprits that causes this is the valve alignment. You know, a lot of times players are gonna end up being, you know, chasing their tail because what they're really chasing is the valve alignment. What is a valve alignment? Basically, when we're talking about the valve alignment, we have the valve casing here, and then we have, so which, you know, we have tubes and holes going through the valve casing, and then we have holes in the valves themselves, right? Right? That's what a valve looks like. We have holes in the valves, and ideally, and just about every manufacturer out there has designed their instruments so that the holes in the valves line up perfectly with the holes in the valve cluster. However, what we found to be overwhelmingly true is that those, those holes aren't lined up perfectly. They'll be off by a certain amount. And what we found in discovering, Bob patented the valve alignment. He discovered how important the alignment was back in the early 70s. And so all of those issues that I talked in the beginning of this video, upper register, response, evenness between the different valve combinations, articulation, projection, colors in the sound, brightness, darkness, all of those things are all affected if the valves are out of alignment. So what we do here at the shop and what Brett's gonna talk about is first, what causes the misalignment? Why would your brand new horn be misaligned and why would a vintage horn be misaligned? And then we'll talk about how we actually fix it and the results you could expect from doing a valve alignment. So Brett, can you tell us why an instrument would be out of alignment? One of the main things is the pad material, you know, so that, that can change. It could be just, you know, I mean, sometimes the wrong thickness, but also just, you know, there's something called accumulated tolerances, you know, on a valve and on a valve casing, you know, there's multiple parts that are being all put together. They can be plus or minus a little bit one way or the other. So like here we have the finger button that could be plus or minus three thousandths. You have the downstroke pad varies 15 thousandths plus or minus. Now next you have a top cap, that's another three thousandths. The upstroke pad, again, is another 15 thousandths plus or minus. After that, you have the stem itself, which is three thousandths of an inch. The spring barrel is another three thousandths. And then the valve section, the body of the valve is, could be another three thousandths. So for the accumulated tolerances of all these parts together, it could be plus or minus 42 thousandths of an inch. As you can see, this can lead to a huge variance that can make each valve be in a wildly different position, you know, straight from the factory. So you're telling me even though my instrument was made by a CNC lathe, mm -hmm. a high-tech lathe, it could still be out of alignment? Oh, absolutely. We see brand new instruments and old instruments that are out of alignment. At the end of the day, you're soldering parts together, you're brazing parts together, you're building the whole valve section by hand. And there's a lot of handwork that goes into that that can lead to, you know, a misalignment at the end of the day. So as Brett was saying, there's accumulated tolerances to each part. And what does that mean to you as the player? If your alignment is out by eight thousandths of an inch, which is, I mean, just a few human hairs, visually a very small number, or uh, two millimeter, 0.2 millimeters for those of us overseas or everywhere else in the world, uh, that's a huge blowing difference. That's a huge response difference for the average trumpet. Uh, you think about it, the difference between a medium bore instrument and a large bore instrument in some, for some manufacturers is only eight thousandths of an inch. And that's on the low end of 
the horns that we've measured. We've measured tens of thousands of instruments, and very rarely, maybe four or five instruments have actually been under eight thousandths of an inch in all six up and down stroke combinations on a regular three valve horn. So what does that mean to the player? That means you're fighting the instrument. All of that time you're spending in the practice room, you're spending some of it compensating for your instrument not being correct. And in this day and age, you want to maximize your time. You want to maximize your practice time and the progress you're making and spend your time making music and working on your own issues in your playing, not something that's easily fixable in your instrument. So how do we do the valve alignment? Basically, first thing we do is we measure the casing of the valve and basically we come out with, you know, the measurements of where the valves are, you know, how the ports are. Either they're too high or too low, you know, how far away from exactly correct are they? After that, basically, we'll take out the pad material and throw it away. We put in our own pad material that for most players, it's going to last somewhere from five to ten years. Most normal pad materials, you know, we're going to get a few weeks of them, maybe, you know, before it starts to change um, in a significant amount. So, you know, after we do that, we kind of remeasure the horn, see where the valves are with our pad material, and then make small adjustments to line up the holes on the casings and the holes on the valves themselves. So as Brett was saying, the first thing we do in the process is measure the alignment of your instrument, where, where, how far out of alignment your instrument is. And so we provide you with this card that shows you exactly where your instrument is when you bring it to us. And it's something we provide for free. So even if you aren't interested in doing valve alignment and you're just curious where your instrument is, you can always bring your trumpet or whatever piston instrument to the shop and we'll measure it for free. And if not here, you can mail it in or catch us at a show. We try to travel all over the world and we take our equipment with us and can measure your instrument wherever we are. So this is a, a B flat trumpet we just measured. And so what Brett will do now is kind of go over the numbers of what this customer could expect after doing a valve alignment. Sure. So as John said, these are basically the measurements of the valves, you know, as we receive them, you know, before we do any work to the horn. So with numbers like these, which are very common, you know, the player does not know how this horn is supposed to play. Um, when they get the horn back, these numbers are all going to be zero. And, you know, they'll be able to, you know, reach the full potential of what that horn can do for them in their playing. What kind of instruments can we do a valve alignment on? Good question, Brett. I mean, pretty much anything with a piston. Uh, we don't do rotary valves yet. But, I mean, your B-flat trumpet, uh, your C trumpet, your flugelhorns, I mean, a piccolo trumpet, uh, I, I, bigger instruments like a bass trumpet. We've done tubas. We've done contrabass trumpets. I mean, we've even done this ultra rare King Liberty mini trumpet we can do a valve alignment on. I mean, we can do pretty much any piston instrument ex except for like natural trumpets. But I mean, who would play those anyway? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll come back when you have valves. So one of the things about our pad material is its stability. And so what we've done is on this uh, instrument, on the first valve, we have our pad material. And on the second valve, we have a very common instrument here in Los Angeles, their pad material. It's a neoprene kind of type material. And so you can see how much difference uh, in stability but just between in the downstroke. You know, because when you think about it, you want two things when you're playing. You want consistency and you want predictability. And if you have a squishy pad, every time you push the valve down, it's going to be in a different place. Not just through wear, but depending on how hard you're pushing down. If you're playing a gentle passage and you have light fingers, or if you're going real fast or angry and you're pressing down harder, that could cause your valve to be in a different place which could cause cracking or splitting notes and certainly different timbre. So I can demonstrate uh, on this first valve, this is our pad material. So if you can see on the dial, if I'm pushing, I'm pushing really hard with my thumb, it's only moving a few thousandths of an inch. And no normal trumpet player is gonna one, be playing with their thumb, but pushing that hard. Now on the second valve, this is a, a typical material, a typical neoprene material that uh, some manufacturers use. I mean, I can move the valve without pushing very hard. It's moving 25, 30 thousandths of an inch. And that's without a lot of pressure. So 
if you're using that material, let's say for argument's sake, your valves are aligned at the factory and your horn's perfect, just the squishiness of the material, the instability is enough that it's gonna move all over the place as you're playing. And certainly a material that's that unstable over the course of a few weeks is gonna be consistently changing, which means you in your practicing, you in your performing, you don't know where the horn is gonna respond that day because each day the horn's in a little different place. Every day is gonna be a little different, but the instrument, you want it day after day after day to be in the same place, to be predictable, because then you're really gonna maximize your practice time and more importantly, you're gonna maximize your performances. So what kind of results can you expect with a valve alignment? Uh, well, all the th problems that we addressed at the beginning of this video. Uh, we see with our customers all the time an improvement in the upper register, increased projection and colors in the sound, intonation issues are fixed or certainly more manageable after the valve alignment, and most importantly is the evenness. Uh, when you go through each different valve combination, when you're doing Clark studies and playing scales, each valve combination is going to respond predictably and consistently across the horn. The, the same colors in the sound and the same resistance, the same response. So even this really is, is key after a valve alignment, but you get all those other things as well. But the other important aspect is alignment and the mouthpiece choice. The valve alignment is really the foundation of you know, what your setup is. Because if your valve alignment is not right, if it's out and it's changing on you, the choice you're gonna make for a mouthpiece is gonna be, you know, bad if not worse. You know, players always talk about, you know, going on a mouthpiece safari, quote unquote. You know, I went on the safari looking for something, looking for this, tried this, tried that. You know, they go through 10, 20 or more mouthpieces. You know, we hear about it. They've People kept us in business for a while. They've kept us in business. <laughs> we do like those kind of customers, but... <laughs> but Usually, at the end of the day, why they're doing that is because the alignment has, has changed on them. You know, the alignment in their horn has gotten so bad or so different from what they thought it was to cause them to have issues with their mouthpiece. And, you know, they start chasing their tail and they can't make a decision and they can't make a, you know, an educated choice because, you know, the alignment isn't right and it's still changing on them. So, you know, from one week to the next, you know, they get a new mouthpiece, maybe they love it for, you know, two days. But then as things start to change again, it goes out the window. When we do the valve alignment, that stops, that, you know, that ends. The horn's gonna play the same, you know, day after day after day. And then when you're practicing, when you're looking for a mouthpiece, you can make a much, much better, you know, choice and much, much better progress. So that's exactly it. Get the instrument right first and then you can make a much better decision with the mouthpiece, and then you forget it because you know that instrument's gonna stay that way for five to 10 years. And then when the R pad material eventually does start to wear, it's gonna wear a few th thousandths of an inch, never the eight or 15 or 30 thousandths of an inch that we commonly see. But when the pads do start to wear, we have all of our horns, all 15,000 or however many horns we've done to date, we have all of those measurements on file including the pad material we use. So all you need is a new set of pads. Every five to 10 years, we can mail them to you. You put the pads in yourself and it puts everything back to zero again, just like the moment after we finished working your horn. So the alignment is good for the lifetime of the horn and you can depend on it. You can depend on your instrument playing the same day after day, which again is the whole goal. So if you want to know if the valve alignment is the right solution for you, feel free to reach out to us. If you go to bobreeves.com, you can sign up for a free 30-minute consultation, which will go through all of your equipment and answer your questions and see if an alignment is right for you. And please remember, if you like this video, like it down below, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, do all those things. Okay? All the things. All those things. And call us. And call us.